Hello, welcome back. Today we have another Friday Faves and Fails, which I have missed because while we were away, I kept using things and being like, oh, I have to mention this in a video because I'm either rediscovering something that I've always loved or realizing that I'm just hardly mentioning things that I use all the time. And recently I was contacted by a PR about something completely different and um, they kind of listed all of the brands that they were working with. And I was like, oh, whoa, is this in the UK now? And it is. So this is Dry Bar Prep Rally, Prime and Prep Detangler. This is my all-time favourite detangler for a few reasons. I Number one, I just like the way that it works. It detangles my hair really well. Um, I have very, very fine, super tangly hair because there's loads of hair, but it's thin, thin, thin. And um, so I always need some kind of detangler. I don't necessarily need a full-on conditioner because my hair isn't it in terrible condition, not that you would know that right now because I've curled and hairsprayed it to death. But it doesn't necessarily need that, but it does need something. So I'll put on some kind of leave-in something before I brush my hair through. And this has always been my favourite because obviously number one, it works. Number two, the smell is incredible. Let me try and, let me try and tell you what it smells like. It's kind of like minty, but musky. Oh, I love it. It's not like sweet or, but it's fresh. Kind of fresh and minty, but kind of also a hint of woody, musky, aftershavey, which is always my go-to. Aftershavey, I don't really know what that means, but to me, it means something. I like the scent. I also like the way it sprays. It's a nice spray. That, that makes a difference. It really, really does. And it's a heat protector. Um, so I tend to let my hair air dry. So it's a bit of an issue because it's difficult to find heat protectants that you can use on dry hair. So I can use this and then if I choose to heat style my hair later, I feel like it's protected. I don't know if that's how it works, but I think it is. I do have other detanglers that have heat protectants. So there are other things about this that obviously I must prefer. And I think most of it is that it is enough to actually help me get through the tangles because not all of them are. Um, and the smell, I really, really do like the smell. I first got it in FabFitFun and then I purchased it again through FabFitFun and now it's available exclusively at Harrods. Sesh Vite. Have you ever heard me talk about this before? If you haven't, where have you been? Possibly because I have my nails put on these days, but I always still have this in because I use it on my toes. So I bought some of these recently because I wanted to get one for my daughter because she used mine and I was livid. This is the creme de la creme of top coats. If you paint your own nails, which most of us do, um, unless you have them stuck on like these one, I mean, I, these are too long right now, but I do enjoy permanently done nails. That's the main reason that I like acrylics. Gels do not last for me. Acrylics are like, ugh because I'm a very like hands-on person. The minute I paint my nails, they could maybe last four hours. But on my toes, it's different. Anyway, back to this. When I do paint my own nails, I always, 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 always have to have this. Um, there are two reasons why it's absolutely amazing. Number one, the gel finish. It looks like gel. Every single time anyone has ever commented on my nails, when I've got such feet on, they always think they're gel nails because the shiny, shiny finish is just everything. The second and possibly most important thing is it dries so quickly. A major, major reason beyond the fact that these are permanent and I don't ever have to think about um, painting my nails before I film something because for years, that would be like a block. If you consider this to be work, that would be a, bl a block to work. So I would be like, okay, I need to film a video. Um, I need to do my hair, which most of the time I don't do. I need to do my hair, I need to do my makeup, I need to you know be dressed. Um, yada yada and one of the things was I need to paint my nails and that's not a quick thing that's like minimum an hour from start to finish and that's at like probably an hour and a half two hours that's really something you need to be doing in the evening and then because it's me they won't still be good the next day it was a real pain um and I have a, a, a slightly weird aversion to chip nail polish I think someone said something I know someone said something to me when I was a teenager a family member and it really stuck with me so this is why I have the acrylics, but in terms of time and commitment, this really, really cuts it down. So if you do, let's say two coats, you don't even have to wait for the nail polish to be 100% dry before you can use this. In fact, it's better if it's not. It still needs to be kind of like slightly touch dry. So you don't want to be like, can't be immediate, obviously. You don't want to be like 
<laughs> painting it back off again. It needs to be touch dry. Um, but then you can put on the sesh feet and it somehow like permeates through the nail varnish to make it like all as one. And it's glossy and perfect and it hardens the whole thing and it dries in, I mean, 10 minutes absolute max. Perfect. So if you've never used this before, you have to have it in your life. Make sure that you uh, cap your nails, you know, like you go around the edge. Really make sure you've got around the top because it can shrink slightly, slightly, but you just need to make sure that you've covered your entire nail. Um, it's just the best of the best. So I actually got three for, I think, £17 on Amazon and I'm keeping two of them for myself and I'm gifting one of them to Ella. Another thing I was sent um, a new one of last month that I've been using for ages um, and I also did buy one for my daughter and I bought one for my mum and this was before I'd ever received anything in PR. They contacted me and asked if I'd like to receive anything. I was like, well, actually, I wouldn't mind a couple of new ones of these because I use them all the time. Um, and they are the Aquis, Aquis, Aki, AQ, I think it's Aquis, A-Q-U-I-S. I'm looking for the label. Here you go. How would you say this? Aquis? So I've always had the regular ones. I've had a white one, a blue one, uh, a gray one maybe? Anyway, they're basically um, towels that help to dry your hair quicker. And when you've got a lot of hair, it really, really makes a difference. I, when I had much shorter hair, I used to have the ones from, um, I bought some from Amazon, I bought some from Primark, and I was like, yeah, they kind of all do the same thing. Um, in my mind, it was just a towel that was like a twisty turban. It, it was a, a turban that stayed on your head better. But I wasn't really seeing a benefit of um, this kind of towel. I was like, well, that just seems like an expensive version of exactly the same thing that I'm getting from Primark. The one thing that I did think even then was that the Primark ones, if they weren't 100% dry, smelled horrible, like horrible. Sometimes they, I mean, they just smell really quite a lot like vomit um, and they'd need to be washed multiple times. Sometimes you just couldn't get that smell out of them and I don't know why. I've never had a, a towel smell that terrible. So there was that. Uh, but I didn't really see kind of like the benefit in terms of drying time. Since my hair is super long, compared to, you know, what my hair used to be like, these absolutely do make a difference. So I would say, if your hair's like really short, probably not gonna make a massive difference. If you've got a lot of hair, this is legit. These are, these really do dry your hair quicker. Now this one particularly, uh, there's not an issue that I've had with these, but this one particularly has got copper in it apparently, which helps to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Control odors. So it stops it from getting that smell, but I've never known these, cause they're so thin and they dry so quickly. I've never known these to, to have that smell. Like I used this last night and it just smells like a clean towel. The other one they sent me is like, it's like I invented this in my mind. So on one side, it's the towel. And then on the other side, it's this. And this is from Alice and Olivia. It's in collaboration with Alice and Olivia. So it's still in a quiz, a quiz, a key, a keys. I don't know. Um, that brand, oh, I should have, it's on there. It's on there, Alice and Olivia. Um, so this is a little bit more expensive because it's two things in one. And I would like your opinions on this because this is always something that's kind of in the back of my mind been, I want this thing, but I'm not sure if it's okay. Um, I have always wanted like a, a silky turban to wear at nighttime. And there are tons and tons, like bonnets, tons and tons of sleeping um, bonnets that you can buy. So many different kinds. Um, which are supposed to reduce breakage and reduce frizz and uh, prolong, you know, your hair style, whether it's be like a blowout or your curls or whatever else. And my hair is so, so frizzy and um, again, so fine and tangly that was really appealing to me. I've actually gone as far as putting my silk pillowcase, like wrapping it onto my head. And it really does the trick. It does. And having a silk pillowcase at all makes a big difference. But whenever I've gone to buy one, I've been like, this feels like cultural appropriation. Most of the women in the marketing images are Caucasian, but it definitely feels like the things that I've been looking at are almost identical to historically what black women would have used to stop breakage in their Afro hair, which is a completely different, that is a completely different reason. Like we don't have the same kind of breakage with Caucasian hair and is this just something that we've gone, well, we like that, so we're gonna do that too. And at what point is it not okay? And these are the things that go through my mind while I'm Googling things that maybe I might want. So when this arrived, I was like, okay, 
I think I feel okay about this because this is effectively exactly the same towel. On one side, it's the same towel, but on this side, it's silky. And so basically you can wrap your hair up and it's silky on the inside and it's gonna do the same job. It's gonna, imagine, it's gonna do the same job. Reduce that friction and um, potentially prolong your hairstyle. How easy this is to actually keep on your head overnight, I don't know, because I haven't tried it yet. Uh, but even if it was like during the day, you've got ready in the morning or something, and you're like, or you're doing something with your hair, you wanna get um, your makeup done or whatever, and you wanna kinda keep your hair off your face, but you don't wanna clip it up. I feel like there are lots of uses for this for me, but it definitely kind of felt like it filled that void without making me feel icky about it. I'd love to know your opinions on that because I don't know if I'm just kind of overthinking it, possibly. And lastly, I just wanna give a, a little shout out to two brushes that I've used tons recently, and they are from two different, I mean, it doesn't really matter where they're from because they are quite generic brushes. Also, has anybody else's kid suddenly picked up the word generic? Because Milo's using the word generic all the time. Things are so generic, but he means like plain or basic, I think. I suppose that's kind of what generic means, but he's using it it's driving me crazy. But yeah, so these are fairly generic brushes. Although this one's kind of special. This is from Look Fantastic. It doesn't have a number or anything on it, and I honestly don't even know when I got this. Um, but it's really kind of dense, fluffy brush. I have been using this just to kind of like pack on a ton of eyeshadow. This is my only, like one color of eyeshadow. Pack it all on, blend it all out, does the whole thing. Love it. I can put like a little paler part in there if I want to. I can even kind of add a little bit of a dark thing and blend it out. I can pretty much do my entire eye makeup with this one brush. And I just wanted to say, hello, special brush. You've done me well over the past few weeks. Um, and this one, which I was using for my eyebrows, this is an eyebrow brush from Billion Dollar Brushes. Um, and I like how tiny this is. It's very tiny and I was using it for my brows, but now I'm using it for my powder liner. So if you've, if you've heard me talk about this before, it's my favorite way of doing liner since, um, I mean, I'm getting a little older. Probably after 30, this was my favorite way of doing liner because I have quite hooded eyes. And um, if I kind of like look dead on, I can't do the same liner I used to because this has gone down here. And so if I try and do a liquid line, and I'm not gonna try and do that cut, like it's never gonna happen. I can't do the same liquid line that I would use to because I would do it from here and be like, oh, that looks great. And then I'd do this and it would be like a wobbly line. So how I have preferred to do my liner in the past few years is powder, but I'd use like one of those really, really fine, teeny, teeny, tiny eyeliner brushes. And recently I've discovered that using this, I just kind of like stamp it along the lash line. It gives me a really soft, but a very kind of dense, nearly put myself in the eye, mm. look. And one of the things I've also been doing, all one color on the lid with this brush, and then I'll do kind of like a really dark brown along the lash line. And then if I wanna go super smoky, I'll get a black and just get it as close to the lashes as I can, like smudge the brown out a little bit, do the black just, just, just at the lash line. Love it, love it. I would say more and more I'm realizing that brushes are possibly more important than the makeup itself, um, you know, within reason. Because often it is just a matter of application, like you just have to find the way to apply things for yourself. Um, that's that's the key rather than, oh, I need to find, I need to try all of these millions of different things because nothing's working for me. Maybe you need to try a different application. But as always, I always, always suggest, if you're struggling with foundation, try with your hands. Try it with your hands because the heat of your fingers, the heat of your like the whole thing, you're getting it in there a little bit better. It just kind of tends to melt into the skin, totally dependent on the foundation, of course. If it's very heavy, maybe not, but especially if you're using kind of like a lightweight hydrating. If you're using a brush and it's like streaky and you feel like it's too heavy, try a smaller amount on your hands, maybe even just, just after moisturizing because it gives a little bit of a slip. I find that to be um, on days where just nothing is working that is my fail safe. Uh, and that is it for today. I should probably rename these Friday fails and faves and fails um, in the new year to just be Friday faves because there are so rarely fails. Um, I may just start collecting them and doing kind of like a disappointing products every few months because I don't feel like on a weekly basis I'm trying enough products anymore because I'm just saying no to most PR. Um, I'm saying no to anything that I wouldn't purchase. So <laughs> there's a lot less fails 
there's a lot less things that that I'm like, ah, oh, this is not that great because I do my research before I buy products for myself. And if I'm not interested in a product, then I'm not going to take it. So I do receive still some things without being contacted. Um, but where possible, I try to only receive what I actually would buy myself. Um, and so there's less and less disappointing products. And the disappointing products that um, tend to arise for me now are I've, I've looked, I've Googled, I've done all of the research, I've spent a lot of money on something and it's not lived up to the expectation. That tends to be where my disappointing products are these days and that happens again less and less. So yeah, maybe we'll rename for the new year. I'm already so excited for January. Jan I, I love a new year. I know we all do, but I love a new year, especially on YouTube. Um, it all feels like a fresh start and although obviously I'm, I'm, I want to say I'm excited for Christmas, but I'm kind of in a bit of a ugh, funk. I'm vlogging this week because I want to force myself to be festive and force myself to um, get kind of into the Christmas spirit. So I'm vlogging basically every day till Christmas. So if you're interested in coming on that journey with me, go and check out those vlogs because we are doing things. We're doing things to feel Christmassy. Um, so I, I want to say I'm excited for Christmas. I kind of am. But I'm really excited for New Year.